Krishna, welcome everyone. And today's topic is indeed um, uh, very important. Uh, I mean, it's the number one security issue for Azerbaijan. Uh, the, the sometimes referred as uh, um, Armenian-Azerbaijani conflict. Uh, more widely, it's known as the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Um, the um, as we don't have much time about talk about history will uh, at some point some of the elements of history is very important and uh, but we, we will uh, I'll focus because we don't have much time it's uh, about 20 25 minutes left uh, so uh, we'll focus on the current status and what uh, steps we should undertake uh, to ensure indeed the human security uh, just so I would like to uh, remind uh, that the conflict is the territorial. Uh, it's not religious conflict, though, in the especially English language media uh, literature, you can find a lot of reference to Christian Armenians, Muslim Azerbaijanis. Uh, we have very uh, diverse mosaic uh, a situation when um, the, how to say, the, the, the religious uh, does not play uh, a role in establishing a relationship uh, between countries. We have, uh, Azerbaijan has very solid relationship with a number of uh, Christian countries, Christian majority countries, including, for example, our immediate neighbors like Georgia and some others. Uh, and Armenia has also very uh, deep relationship, very large agenda with Muslim countries, also immediate neighbors like Iran. Uh, so it's the territorial conflict, and uh, it began as um, uh, the project of recreating uh, Great Armenia, uh, the sort of the um, the idea coming from uh, from hist Armenian historians, uh, nationalist historians, claiming that Great Armenia existed 2,000 years ago, and that, that they trying to recreate the boundaries of that Great Armenia. And Nagorno-Karabakh is part of that project, and uh, it began in 1988 during uh, the modern conflict. Though well, the roots uh, goes back to the beginning of 20th century, uh, when both ethnic groups, Armenians and Azerbaijanis, were under Russian rule, Russian imperial rule. So I believe that overall the conflict has uh, imperial legacy, but also uh, should be considered in the context of the nationalism, modern nationalism, and modern, I'm, I'm speaking about for the last hundred years, maybe from the end of 19th century, what uh, the social anthropologists and the political scientists uh, consider as a period of the, when, when the modern nationalism uh, began emerging. Um, but anyway, um, for 30 years, um, conflict, uh, I mean, it began in 1988 and resulted in the occupation of Azerbaijani territories uh, in 1992-94, when just Azerbaijan became independent from the Soviet Union. And uh, for 30 years, we will, we've been negotiating for peaceful resolution uh, with no result, unfortunately. And uh, despite the call from the United Nations Security Council in 1993, through four resolutions uh, to withdraw immediately and unconditionally all occupying forces from Azerbaijan's territory. And by the way, those resolutions are also important in terms of the uh, reconfirmation of Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and sovereignty of Nagorno-Karabakh, because the, the opposite side claims that the Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh as a right for determination, they conducted referendum and became independent. So all these uh, unilateral actions uh, uh, accompanied by the military excursion on Azerbaijan sovereign territory from the perspective of international law at uh, null and void. But finally, uh, last year, uh, after the second, so-called Second Karabakh War, uh, Azerbaijan liberated territory. And now we have to really think about, indeed, the uh, human security, and at least there are three aspects of of this human security. First, uh, any security is best ensured if the regional countries agree on the architecture of regional security. This is indeed uh, important, and we see 
through the experience of the 20th century European wars, two global wars, two world wars, which cost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first war cost 14 million lives, second war cost uh, 60 million lives. After all these tragic events and, you know, uh, the European architecture is based on the principle of international law, first of all, of territorial integrity. Uh, another important element of the, for example, European security is the life of minorities, the, the rights of minorities. And this is exactly what uh, Azerbaijan offers uh, to opposite side and to all countries of the region to build architecture of the security in the South Caucasus based on the mutual respect to the principle of territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence. And then based on that to build and ensure minority rights for all ethnic minorities in the region. We have Armenians on our territory. Before the conflict, we had 250,000 Azerbaijanis living in Armenia. They all ethnically cleansed uh, in 1988-89. So ideally, according to the peace declaration, ceasefire declaration, which three countries, Russia, uh, under the auspices of Russia, Armenia, and Azerbaijan signed on November 9th, uh, the, all refugees should return to their home, all internal displaced persons. Uh, so that means that Azerbaijani ideally should return back to Armenia, and also Armenians should also return to Azerbaijan, because uh, uh, now currently mostly Armenians concentrated in Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, so this one dimension is the international law, Territorial, which is based on certain principles like territorial integrity, minority rights. The second dimension is the, the, the ensuring the rights of ethnic minorities, their development. And here, the Azerbaijan uh, declaring the, the path for reintegration of Armenian nationals, of our, our Armenian let's say, individuals in. Uh, people living in Nagorno-Karabakh of Azerbaijan back into Azerbaijan administration. That was the mosaic of pre-conflict period, mosaic of the South Caucasia region, which, uh, you know, it's very diverse. The Azerbaijan hosts 114, if I'm not mistaken, the figures, 114 ethnic groups, only Azerbaijan. Uh, so if you go, uh, to Georgia, also very diverse mosaic. Uh, the only almost monoethnic country in the region is Armenia. 99% of population of Armenia consists of Armenians. But before the conflict, as I said, it, we, we had a considerable Azerbaijani minority. So, the, and the third dimension of uh, human security is the economic development. And here we are facing with huge, enormous I would say, gargantuan task to rebuild formerly occupied territories. Because, the, unfortunately, Armenian nationalists, they uh, pursued scorched earth policy. You can find in, on the internet a lot of uh, footages and clips uh, featuring uh, several regions of Azerbaijan, like Agdam, Fizuli, Jabrail, which there is no single single house remain untouched. All the gates, windows, frames, roofs were pillaged and uh, looted, sold, uh, you know, to some foreign countries or taken to Armenia. All infrastructure, uh, energy grid, sewage system, everything, the pipe system, water pipe, everything destroyed. Uh, so, uh, different estimates made by the economists, uh, it, we need about 15 billion US dollars just to put basic infrastructure into place. 
and uh, Azerbaijan for this year allocated only 2.2 uh, billion manas because indeed uh, all Azerbaijan also uh, despite the relatively good uh, macroeconomic figures still were also affected by COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, before the government of Azerbaijan uh, there are a couple of uh, immediate uh, goals. Uh, first, the mining, because the huge area, uh, you know, planted with land mines and Armenian side refused to to give the, the map of the land mines planted there. So we have uh, still losses. Almost every week, a uh, couple of military service men and some civilians die as a result of the mine explosion. So after uh, the mining, the second task to build the, again, the basic main infrastructure like roads. Uh, all of the Azerbaijan is building roads uh, uh, and uh, also uh, the airport in the region. And a few days ago also the president of Azerbaijan inaugurated railroad. Uh, so that's the second task to have at least communication lines to the, uh, uh, the liberated territories. The third task is to build uh, housing, I mean to provide housing for refugees. Uh, and we have from Nagorno-Karabakh and around Nagorno-Karabakh, seven regions, we have about 700,000 refugees and uh, I mean, they called uh, technically internal displaced, per, uh, displaced persons. So we, uh, it will take probably several years to build this. Uh, and with the next task, uh, after all that, is there of course the reconciliation. That is also important element of uh, the future human security. That the Armenians and Azerbaijanis will be living uh, side by side peacefully. So there are kind of three big R's. Uh, reconstruction, reconciliation, and reintegration. Along, the, uh, along with that, Azerbaijan also, uh, uh, because we cannot consider situation in liberated territories outside of the regional context, so uh, one set of problem is to resolve issues with the Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh, provide them uh, with the minority rights, with the, some uh, the, I'll say the municipal administration, uh, and unfortunately still there are a lot of revanchism in Armenia itself and among Armenians in Nagorno-Karabakh. There are a lot of uh, warlords and criminals which perpetrated war crimes uh, during First Karabakh War, even in, in 90s. And by the way, uh, in uh, in two weeks we are marking sad anniversary of Hojala massacre which resulted in death of 613 civilians, including women and children. Uh, uh, the, the whole town was raised to the ground. So uh, that is, of course, difficult task. But the second set of problems is to resolve all outstanding issues with Armenia itself, because Armenia continue, unfortunately, continues to voice uh, revanchist rhetoric, or at least uh, to put uh, in agenda the territorial issues, uh, but we believe uh, that issues of territorial claims should be put aside. Uh, it should be the matter of history. We should look for the future, and future indeed might be bright if we, all three countries, Georgia, Azerbaijan, Armenia, will begin economic development, regional integration. We have high uh, integration, regional cooperation with Georgia. Armenia remained isolated all these years because of the territorial claims. And of course, our immediate neighbors. Uh, uh, this is the geopolitical reality. South Caucasus has three geopolitical powers in immediate neighborhood. That's the Russia, Iran, Turkey. And we believe that with this participation, three plus three, uh, though there are some, again, outstanding issues between us and Armenia, between Georgia and Russia, but the aim gradually to move 
to and uh, based on the principle of territorial integrity. It's also important. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, the principle of territorial integrity for Georgia uh, because it also suffers from the territorial uh, losses and conflict. So based on that, to build the future. And of course, some other outside actors, United States, United, European Union, China, uh, some other uh, our partners, uh, uh, in the neighborhood, outside of neighborhood, can uh, be uh, involved. Uh, Azerbaijan already invited uh, several countries to participate in reconstruction projects. Turkey, Pakistan, Hungary, Italy, uh, those countries who uh, support uh, unequivocally Azerbaijan's territorial integrity and supported us during the Second Karabakh War, but uh, Azerbaijan is open for cooperating with, with many other countries. Recently, we held just a discussion with the United Kingdom envoy from, from London. So uh, that's the future of the region. Perhaps I will stop.